Good evening. Jordan, thank you for that wonderful prayer and, and that focus, that heartfelt focus for us tonight as we are approaching God once more. And, and Ben, thank you for leading us in that song. And you know, actually, I, I think it's important if you look at the passage that's up on the screen, the fact that we just sang Living by Faith. Uh, we have such a blessing there in Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to be looking at that tonight. As we saw this morning, we have had a continuation of our theme, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And, and as we said this morning, our focus for the rest of the year is that we will be as strong as iron so that we can sharpen one another. And so in doing so, we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, as Paul tells us how to be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. And this morning, this was the, the slide that was up, and, and a few of you had, had mentioned to me about the picture that's above the cast iron strength. If you look there, it's, it's actually a little barbell. And on that, I understand it's, it's very small. It's kind of hard to see it from there. But this is a close-up of that. Raising the bar. Being a barbell. Raising the bar. But... Uh, it was asked me, what is the OT and the NT? And that's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you think about a barbell, you think about that perfect balance of being able to lift up, uh, lift up that barbell, lift up that weight in order for us to be strengthened. And so we're going to be looking, beginning in Hebrews chapter 11, we'll be looking at the, uh, the Old Testament men and women of faith that help us to raise that bar. And we're going to be looking at Abel. And uh, definitely the, uh, the fact that he was, he was definitely able-bodied to raise the bar, but uh, that, that's beside the point. The fact is, he's the first that's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. If you will, turn to Hebrews chapter 10, though, we're going to look at verse 35. The Hebrews writer says, Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God you may receive what is promised. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. This is a wonderful reminder for us that, that we understand the coming one will come and will not delay, and that we will have, we will receive what was promised. We in the church understand this promise better than those of the Old Testament. Those of us under the new covenant, under the new law, we are able to see the picture. We are able to see what the prophets and what those of old didn't get to see. We are able to see the bigger picture. And so when we look at their lives and the faith that they had... Oftentimes, their faith puts ours to shame in the, the little amount that they had to, to work with and their faith and their love and, and devotion to God and that they were those who lived by faith. So when he says that, that God has favor with those who have faith and, and he is not pleased with those who would shrink back and, are to, and be destroyed... He says in verse 1 of Hebrews 11, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the, convic the conviction or evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So we understand that faith is so important. Faith is what... what what brings us here tonight before the throne of God in our worship? Notice it was faith that brought Abel before the Lord in his worship, in his offering. In verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. We discussed last week that as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another, that God was willing to be that sharpener for Cain. And we saw that God was seeking to, to sharpen Cain when, when Cain, Cain had not, his gift had not been accepted, and we understand that his countenance had fallen. 
He was literally trying to sharpen the countenance of his friend. And he was telling Cain that you have a choice as to what you're going to do. He explained that sin is knocking at the door. And its desire was for him. And he gave in to the sin and he killed his brother Abel. But when we've looked at why God accepted Abel's sacrifice and not Cain's, sometimes we'll look to, and, and we've, from this pulpit, I've discussed this concept from our class, actually on Wednesday night, we discussed this concept. Sometimes we'll look at the, the offering that they offered. Was it because God was more pleased with the animal sacrifice than the vegetation? Was it in the sacrifice? Was it, was it in the heart? We're not sure. Except that we are sure to the Hebrews writer. And what he has told us here, it was by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice, a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. It was through faith that Abel offered a sacrifice that was pleasing to God. And so it would be the opposite of faith and why Cain... And, had offered his sacrifice. It was through faith that Abel offered it, and that's why it was acceptable. Faith is so important for us when we come and we offer our sacrifice of praise to him in our worship. Because notice he says, it was through which, through his faith, he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. His continued faith, even though his brother killed him, notice it was his blood that speaks still today. He raises the bar for you and I in our faith because it still speaks when the Hebrews writer wrote this, but it still applies for us to this very day. That we have this example that we can live by faith and we can die by faith. Notice his blood is what speaks in Hebrews chapter 12, if you'll turn over one more chapter, in verses 22 through 24, it says, But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels and festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. We understand that Abel's blood still speaks today because he died in faith. But we have a blood that speaks even better than Abel's. Because it's offered through a better covenant, the New, the New Testament. Jesus himself raised the bar. And actually in, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 he ties in, the Hebrews writer ties in this hall of faith when he says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Abel being the first that was represented. Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus raised that bar for you and I, so that we didn't have to take on the weight of sin that clings so closely. Tonight, we are offering an invitation. If you have sin that is in your life, if you have, if you have the weight of struggles that you need, the prayers of this congregation, whatever your need is, we pray that you'll let it be known so that we can pray with you. And for you. And that the prayer, prayers of the righteous. Will avail much. Tonight what is your need? Maybe you need to obey the gospel. Maybe you need to repent of your sins. And confess that Jesus is Lord. Being baptized in his name. For the forgiveness of your sins. Whatever that need is. Won't you come. All together we stand and sing.